Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This video continues on installing CentOS, which I did previously, and now we're going to install Windows Server. And our goal here is to create an enterprise test environment. So we start by installing a single Windows Server, 64-bit edition. I just did a search, a Google search for Windows Server ISO. This is a Microsoft web page. This is a demo that we're allowed to install. If we had a product key, we could put it in this key and make it work. But in this case, we don't have that uh, product key. We're just going to use the demo version. So. I'm going to, I have CentOS running. If you are um, tight on resources, you might wanna shut down the your other operating systems, in this case, CentOS, before creating a new one. In this case, it shouldn't be a problem. I prefer custom here. I'm going to go through um, and say, I will install the operating system later. And I'm gonna change from Linux. In this case, I'm installing Windows and I am installing Windows Server 2022. Um, there are all of the options here. Obviously, we could select uh, going back to Windows Server 2000. Uh, I'm sure we could install Windows NT, which is always loads of fun. But uh, we're going to do Server 2022. Um, as of recording this, Server 2025 is still, you know, not quite ready. So this is what we'll be using for our class. Again, I'm going to browse and move it out of the local virtual machines environment and into my um, Cento, into my VMs. Now this is why I wanna create a separate directory. So I go to VMs, I don't wanna create the windows inside of CentOS, but I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm going to call it um, server three. Eh, there are reasons why we're calling it server three. It kind of confuses thing, but we'll call it server three. Ultimately we're gonna make um, uh, two more servers and call them DC1 and DC2 for domain controllers. That's why we're calling this server three. I select okay, and now I can click next. And um, this is the firmware type. I'm gonna use UFE. Uh, I don't need secure boot and I'm gonna be making copies of it and, uh, or clones of it. I'll do two and two. I have four, uh, four cores on this host. And this is where 2048 is really not enough for Windows. Um, I'm going to go to 88 gig, 8192. And this is, um, at some point, I might scale this back, uh, especially if I have limited resources. But for my initial installation, it'll, things will just be a little bit easier going with 8 gig. On the win in the Windows world, that's even a little bit light. But uh, now I will do NAT. And again, follow all of the recommended um, options. Um, 60 feels a little bit light also, and I have multiple terabytes on my external drive that I selected. So I'll do 120. Um, and since I'm not allocating all of the disk, it doesn't really matter. And I'll do a split also. So now I am ready to go. There's my disk file. And everything is ready to go. So now what I need to do is point my disk, my CD-ROM at it. So I can select CD-ROM, go here. And previously I was pointing at stream and now I need to, at CentOS stream, um, server eval free. Um, there's my disk and it is ready to go. I can power on this virtual machine and I should start a server installation. Now the key is if I miss this, it times out. So I need to go back. I need to get out of the keyboard there. So what I need to do is actually restart this. I'll go to VM and um, power. I'll just do a restart guest and it just sends a, a restart signal. Now I need to click in there. And when it says press any key, I need to do it. If I miss that, I need to get my mouse outside of that and go and do it again. And you know, it's, there's just, it takes a little bit of timing. So now as it goes, it's going to be pretty straightforward. I want to do English, US, uh, and install now. And this is where <laughs> Microsoft, I won't even say what I'm thinking. Uh, 
you want the desktop experience. This is the non-desktop experience, the one with the, the first selection. That allows you to run commands at a prompt, PowerShell commands. Um, you don't want that. You want the desktop experience almost always. Uh, Microsoft thinks they can move away from that. Again, I won't say what I'm thinking about Microsoft. So now I can click on the checkbox and um, accept the terms. And I need to not do an upgrade. I need to do a custom install because um, I don't have any operating system to upgrade. I'm going to do in that unallocated space. That's that 120 gig drive that I created. That's the files. Um, and now my installation is going to just happen. Um, this will take a few minutes, so I will pause things and come back. Okay, and now it's going to reboot on its own. Um, that took uh, I don't know, three, four, five minutes, um, barely enough time to go get a beverage. So um, it reboots on its own. It's going to, if it came up with the message saying, um, press a key to boot from CD, that's where you wouldn't want to. In this case, VMware recognizes that it should eject the drive. And if I get out of here um, and I go to settings, I can actually see that the drive, uh, actually it doesn't show that it was disconnected. I am going to disconnect it to make sure it is not in the way. But Windows recognized it, it booted up fine. It did some other stuff in the background and now it uh, is going going through a couple of reboot cycles. All this happens on its own, which is kind of convenient. Um, I've been using Windows for a long, long time, and it used to be that uh, the, the, the installation was not that efficient and you had to click multiple times kind of in the middle. Now it, it's you do things at the beginning and the end. So um, I'm gonna start with the built-in administrator account and I am going to use the password cyberclass25 and there it is, uh, capital C in the beginning, just to just to be aware of. Um, so now I'm finishing my settings and I am uh, ready to go. Now, if I do control alt delete, that actually sends a control alt delete signal to the host operating system. So what I wanna do is I wanna go up to VMware and send control alt delete there. Um, and I believe it's control alt insert if you wanna do a command, but uh, so now I do cyber class. You have to click in the window 25, and now I'm logging into my Windows system. And let's see, I can get rid of that. Uh, it is on my network, so I can click yes on this, and it launches all the stuff. And this is Windows Server. So this is where we would start doing things that we do in um, later in the class or in other videos of mine where we install Active Directory and other things uh, that's coming down the road. So um, the only difference here is previously we've done that in a cloud environment. Now we're doing it in a local virtual machine environment. And as you can see, I have multiple, uh, I have CentOS and Windows Server installed. Uh, now, the next thing we wanna do is say, I want more than one server. So we're going to look at that next. So if I, I gave the example before, I have DC1 and DC2 that I'm also going to, to install. And I could go through the process and I could put another disk in, um, I could create a new virtual machine, I can go through the whole process, repeat it, and do it again and just give it different, different names, um, different names here, I can give it different names in the Windows computer. Uh, the problem, uh, is that, you know, as I do this, it takes time. Um, I can also just take all of these copies, all of these files and make a copy of it. Or I can go here and we'll look at this in a little bit and I can clone this computer and I can make a perfect copy of this computer. So if I do that, I will say uh, clone wizard. Um, it's, I need to power it off before I do that. So um, let's actually power it off shut down and I have my Windows server shut down and now I can do manage and I can clone. I can make a copy of this system. Um, 
I don't have any snapshots, so it's just gonna be the powered off system I'm making a copy of. Uh, I want to create a full complete copy. I could try to save some space by doing a linked clone. I don't wanna do that. And it'll try to keep different versions of it. This is gonna be, um, I'm gonna call this server one is gonna be our DC one, except it's defaulting to the default location on here. I wanna go down and put it in my virtual machines and I'm gonna call this make new folder server one. Now, what this is doing is making a perfect copy. The problem is Windows doesn't really identify using the Windows computer name or, or other things. It uses a security identifier. And when I'm making this copy, it is copying the security identifier exactly, which means that my, um, my copy of that Windows server called server one right now is going to have problems if it tries to communicate with my original one in certain ways. It's gonna say duplicate SID if I try to join it to a domain or do some other things that I wanna do. So I'm going to use a program called SysPrep. And I could have used SysPrep and then shut this down and made my clone off of that. Um, but I will show you how SysPrep works. And that is a way of making a duplicate without needing to go through the whole process of installing a new operating system. So I am logging into this perfect copy and you can see I'm on server one right now. I'm not on the original one that I named server three, but I, I didn't name it properly there, but that's the one in server three. So here is server one and cyber class 25. It helps if you type it properly. And cyber class 25. And now I'm logged into this system. Not really a problem if they're running both at the same time. Um, and you can see Windows Server. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, standard Windows license valid for 180 days. It's an evaluation. Uh, but what I'm gonna do right now is open a command prompt and I'm going to CD into um, Windows system. It needs to be system 32. And then there's a directory called sysprep. And inside of sysprep, I can look at that and I see my file called sysprep. That is right here. So if I run sysprep exe, uh, I'm going to say I want to clean out of the box or system auto mode. I want to clean out of the box. That will be enough to um, reset everything, reset the SID and allow it to work. So basically it shuts down, wipes all that stuff out. And when it starts back up again, and if I really wanted to, I would have had to pause it while it was booting back up again. Um, it will start up and it'll start up basically with Windows thinking, hey, this is a new installation. You see how this is a new installation here? Um, it's it's already installed, but it's doing the stuff it did during the actual installation. I'm gonna accept the license terms. I have an administrator, it's letting me set the password. I'm gonna do cyber class 25 again, just so I don't forget. So now with, Active Directory, the it would see these systems as separate systems. It doesn't run into my into that problem anymore. So I could make as many copies as I want and just run sysprep on each of them. That's a quicker process than um, than trying to do a, a new installation on it. I could certainly do a new installation, new virtual machine, go through the whole process again. But sysprep is a good way. Cloning and sysprep. I want another system. I just go here clone again and I can continue on. So I can create as many of these as I want and it, it is a quicker process. Uh, there are certainly other ways of doing this. This is the one we just want to cover right now. Um, but uh, that's uh, installing Windows and making copies of your Windows installation. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.